Detour on CKUT 90.3 FM. Yes, Montreal, my city. Welcome back to the Morning Detour. Weezy Moon Chaser in here with Lambo. Lambo, I want to ask you this morning, man. What about mm. the kids? You know, back to school. <laughs> I know you got some kids. Yeah. I, I was looking at Stat Cat. We have a big guest coming up. I was looking at Stat Cat. I don't know if you look at the last numbers. Black women, you guys are more in higher education than everybody. <laughs> we are. We really are. <laughs> you know what I mean? For those of us that do identify as a minority, you guys really know there's, there's a gap in institution. You know, there's a lot of discrimination on all different levels of society. Basically, we are held back. You know, the game is geared against us, but there are people out there helping us. So yeah. this morning, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so this morning, I want to introduce, she's award-winning change maker. She was named 2020 Top Black Woman to Watch in Canada. I didn't even know we had that award. It's only for the Black Elite. She's That's also right. The, she's also the Executive Director of the CE Center for Young Black Professionals. I want to introduce to the morning detail and welcome Agapi Gassese. Thank you so much I, I for definitely messed me. that up. <laughs> you said it right. You know, I said put some oomph in it. You got it. Put the oomph. <laughs> I'm just going to call you Miss Agapi. Is that okay? Okay, Miss makes me, you know, some of our members call me Miss. I'm like, okay, bro, we're like seven years apart. So. <laughs> I know they intimidate, you know, it's like a respect thing, but I'd like to welcome you to the morning detour. Okay, so before we jump into the whole uh, creation of the CE Center, how did you catch, how did you kind of get into uh, becoming a commentator, a speaker for anti-Black racism and being a workforce development and youth engager? You know what? I feel like, Mike, I always say, like when you're talking about Black Elite, I'm like... I don't identify as <laughs> um, because I really started my career off the backs and the love of just people. I was the young person who really needed support when I was 14. My mother um, had passed away really suddenly. And so wow. I found myself as an individual having to navigate, like my sister was four years older than me. So we were, she was 18, I'm 14. She's looking at me, I'm looking at her like, <laughs> how are we going to figure this thing out, you know? Um, and so I really was a recipient, a huge recipient of like social services and programs, all of those things. So for me, really building this career was off the back of just me joining a program because mm. I was volunteering my time as a young person and I joined a program that United Way was running called City Leaders and um, it was teaching people who were working or volunteering in the social service sector on how to do it better. So from okay. a volunteer standpoint I was just like, you know, I want to be in this program. When mm. I got there, I saw other professionals in the industry helping people because, you know, as immigrant households, usually people are like, be a lawyer, be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> you're, help people, you're not going to make any money. So that was ingrained in me. So I always thought I had to just do it on the side. But when I entered into that program and met other professionals in the social service sector, I realized, oh, okay, like they're well fed. They look like they're doing well for themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I can also make this a career. So really, it comes from lived experience. Like I come from community and um, the need, I've been able to see firsthand the impact of a young person being given an opportunity and also being in the circumstance that is so outside of their um, control. So, you know, I've always just wanted to dedicate my life to being able to support young people like myself. Oh man, that wow, that's, that's a beautiful amazing. thing. Because you know the the youth now is so much different than how we were when we were younger. You know, yeah. it seems like a lifetime ago. I'm like, I'm gonna be 40 soon. I was like, that that things <laughs> things things is moving. <laughs> you better stop, Wazy, because I'm older than you. You better just stop. Yo, I, and you look way better than me. So everything is stop. Good shit. Everything is good. <laughs> So let's talk about the CE Center, right? Yep. So on um, CE Center, you guys have successfully launched seven industry-specific career training programs, which just off the bat is amazing because we really understand the shortcomings of the current curriculum in, in the education system. So for you guys to have a center where kids can go, especially BIPOC um, kids can go and say, listen, there's these programs geared to help you guys advance yourself in society. That's a good look. And then over 420 Black youth throughout the program cycle has benefited a uh, 97.8% uh, retention rate. So whatever you guys have going on there at the CE Center is working. And mm -hmm. um, it's engaging and it's saving lives, more importantly, and helping a lot of black youth across the country. So I heard there's a Montreal expansion on the way. Mm -hmm. yes. I know I know you like <laughs> that, but just, just tell us how did you kind of get involved with the CE Center and what is your current role? 
Yeah, so I'm currently the executive director of the organization. Um, the, co- the two founders uh, are Shireen Ashman and Kofi Hope. And I, for those who remember the Summer of the Gun back in 2005, mm-hmm. um, that was kind of a call to action for the province of Ontario and United Way to come together to create YCF initiatives, so uh, Youth Challenge Fund. And they invested in 24 what they called legacy initiatives. And C is very proud to be two of the 20... Uh, one of two of the 24 that are still standing in the city now. And it was really in, created to invest in communities to address the gun violence situation that is taking place. What are the type of programs that the CE has for the youth? Because, you know, there's many programs that we have, but it seems like, because I've been following the CE actually for um, for a couple of years now. So I'm very well versed on the things and the, the things that you've been putting together for young BIPOC individuals. But for people that don't know what the CE does, is just to let them know the type of programs that you offer to the BIPOC community, to the youth. So I'll just start off right off the bat with our mm-hmm. mission. Our mission is to create an economy where Black youth can become financially prosperous, live high quality lives and contribute to the advancement of Canada. I think oftentimes when we're talking about the Black community, people think that is something far from them if they're not from our community. And the reality is if Black youth strive, then all of Canada is able to benefit from that. And so when we talk about our mission, I'm very diligent to make sure that people understand that our success is everybody's success. And what we do try and focus on is high paying jobs with upward mobility. The reality is our young people, our uh, our unemployment rate is extremely, is two times worse than the national average. So that yeah. tells me we're at the back of the unemployment line. Our job at C is how do we get young people to the front? If not the front, at least close to the front. Mm-hmm. And the way that we do that is starting to think strategically about programming. Where are there high paying jobs with upward mobility that have low barriers to entry? So the five labor gaps that we we identify five labor gaps that data and evidence tell us either they have a severe diversity problem that they as an industry have addressed and said we want to do something about it. Or number two, that there's a severe actual skill gap, like there's not a lot of Canadians who have this particular skill. So that tell, that takes us from the back of the line once you fill them up all the way up to the front. Right. And so um, the industries are entertainment, information technology finance, trades, and social services. We do hospitality, but given the labor trends, we're kind of transitioning those program that industry out. But those are the five industries that we do work in. And each of those industries have a series of programs that you can you can choose from. Um, IT and entertainment having the most. Yeah, I noticed in entertainment because actually I was invited to an event on August 29th that's happening here in Montreal. Christopher yeah. reached out to me because I, you know, I grew up in the film industry and I he, he reached out to me. He's like, I'm here in Montreal now, just moved here. And and once again, I'm like, oh, CE is doing something amazing here for the youth again. So I, I take my hat off to all, of, all the work that all of you do because it's definitely needed. Myself raising young Black youth, this is incredibly important to be able to give them, you know, that stepping stone to be able to continue to have a brighter future because it is much more challenging for them. What are the future other future projects that you um, that the CE has in mind coming up in the next few years? So I definitely want to speak a little bit about what we're doing in Montreal because that is an expansion of our programs. The reality for us is we work with we're also very invested in investing in other black led organizations because nothing for us without us. And uh, we're in kind of a season where everyone wants to be doing help, something yeah, about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and maybe not always letting us lead it, you know. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. what we want to do is empower other organizations across the country because we know that the black community is very diverse. And so what works in Nova Scotia isn't going to work in Toronto. It's going to work in Montreal. It's not going to work, you know, in Alberta. And so what we're looking, what we have been doing is partnering with agencies that are on the ground in community. So we've partnered with DESTA uh, Youth Network in Montreal to be able to pilot one of the um, programs that have been true and tested in Toronto, but being able to bring it to, to a Montreal audience with the young people that they serve. So we're really partnering across the country. We're looking to expand in Nova Scotia. Uh, as well as Alberta, and finding organizations that are Black-led, Black-serving, and Black-focused, and be able to provide them with kind of the blueprint that we have. You know, a 97% retention rate does not come without trial and error. Oh, yeah. and, you know, and we have a proven model that we think is culturally relevant, trauma-informed, 
um, and person centered. And so those three things are kind of like our recipe for greatness. And so we want to be able to expand that across the country. We're starting off in Montreal um, with this production uh, program. I just wanted to get my dates uh, right. So <laughs> August 24th, um, yeah. we are having a is the deadline for the program in Montreal. So if you go to DestaNY.com, you can uh, be able to apply if you're a young person, refer folks, anyone who would be interested in the entertainment industry. We have amazing partners. I will say, I'll give a shout out to Montreal. This is our first city that we're expanding to outside of Ontario. Nice. And you, one visit there and everybody showed up. The unions were on board. The industry was excited and ready for this to happen. And they're ready to open their doors in a way that they haven't done before. And so if you know anyone who might be interested in in getting their foot in the door there, um, again, if they reach out to the uh, and head to the website to apply, I think that would be amazing. So expansion is on the rise. Hopefully uh, next time we talk, we'll, amazing. We'll, we'll reach half the country at least. Yes. <laughs> But no, but you have to come in studio in person. And so yeah. beautiful thing you guys have the entertainment program because we were talking about it earlier on the show. You know, now you see in the music industry, now they have like this virtual guide now. They don't even need us to rap anymore. So it's right. good that it's good that there's a program out there, you know, offering mm-hmm. different options. You know, we could be much more than what people always, you know, uh typecast us as being. Yeah. Totally. And it's also about in front of the camera and behind the camera because yeah. there's a whole industry behind that camera and the more we have people in front of the camera we also need to look good when we're there I, listen, yeah, exactly listen, listen I, I was just thinking I was just waiting for you to first I said I want to see more black men in suits you know when yeah. we see Instagram we always see that you know the, the group of black men it's always brothers in Chicago or DC I love to see a movement like a dapper down movement in yep. Canada black men just wear suits yeah. can we just have a black man suit day <laughs> right, I agree. I, agree. I, agree. <laughs> I endorse this message. Me too. I second <laughs> that endorsement. Listen, like Abby, before we go, we're gonna try something new to uh, this morning on the morning detour. Give us that album. Give us that hip hop album that really resonates with you. Give us and give us the reason why. Oh, a hip hop album that she might give you a soca one. She, yeah. <laughs> she, look, she look like a soca enthusiast you, over there. <laughs> oh, you know what? This is gonna be. I'm not. I was not prepared for this, so this is not maybe the best. Uh, but for me, everyone who knows me knows that I love a Biggie Smalls. Yeah. And as common as a song this is, "Juicy." The reason why I love it is it's the epitome of Black joy. You know, oh, like look at that. Look I drink at that. champagne when I'm thirsty. Like See, yeah? he came out the hood, and he's just like, "Could you believe we did this?" Yeah, yeah. grateful, living in gratitude, yeah. and yeah. With gratitude and like, I love a celebration. And I just, I think we have a lot, a lot of the times we're talking about, you know, all of the places that were misrepresented or were overrepresented in all of the wrong places. But we sure know how to turn a situation around. Ooh, so, yes. <laughs> no, it for me. Nobody could turn lemons into lemonade better than black people. You know we, what I mean? We, we could turn every situation into something. And that's the beautiful thing. And that's the mysticism of being black. And that's the magic I feel resonates, you know, when we hear you speak and, you know, look at your bio. What you're doing is very commendable because it, essentially social work is a thankless job. These kids are different. Mm-hmm. Um, the funding is low. And, you know, and, and, the hardest part too, I don't know if Lamba, you'll co-sign this, mm-hmm. the interest level. So I want to urge Montrealers, we'll put yeah. a link in our bio, Detour 5 and 4. Please come out and doing a great thing. I've been talking with executive director. So you know there's a whole board. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've been director. Executive <laughs> director of the CE Center for Young Black Professionals in Toronto, Miss Agapi. I want to thank you for being on Morning Detour. Please, when you're in town, please come on down to yes. the show. Please come yes, through. Yes, please, I will. Thank you so, so, so much. Oh, thank you for everything that you're doing. Keep up the great work, all of you. The Morning Detour on CKUT 90.3 and then.